Hi, I am uh, Trey German. I'm a two-time Icarus X winner and a Icarus Trophy uh, finisher. So I originally really got interested in these uh, adventure races um, actually after a friend had done another uh, adventurous event um, and, and I kind of saw uh, how fun these things could be. Um, so I actually watched the very first Icarus Trophy that went on from uh, Washington to uh, California while I was at work. You know, I didn't work and I just sat on my computer the whole day watching the live tracking map, you know, asking questions to Shane on Twitter, trying to, to really get a feel for what these pilots were going through. And I knew at that time that I didn't really have the experience and skill that I needed uh, to fly a race of that magnitude, but I really wanted to get to that skill level and experience. Um, and so the next year I decided to do the very first Icarus X race up in uh, Arkansas and Oklahoma. So um, that was a really, really great experience. I flew uh, the very first paramotor that I you know, ever learned on, which was a, a Parajet Volution II uh, with a Pliny 130. And you know, that motor did okay, um, but it was, it was really more of a learning experience than anything else. You know, that was the first time I had ever flown in any terrain. Um, so you know, as I'm coming over these ridges, I started getting rocked around. And I'm from Texas, so I'm used to this beautiful beach flying, these great laminar winds. You know, we have a few spots where we'll fly inland, but you know, it's, it's only at, at dawn and dusk when it's really, really calm and, and beautiful flying conditions. So this was really uh, the first time I had kind of been out of my comfort zone. And, you know, as I went through that race, it really surprised me how well I did. So uh, by about noon the first day, I was the only one left in this event. And that really kind of floored me and surprised me because, you know, some of the Martin brothers were in this race. There were some really experienced pilots that just kind of said, you know, screw it. You know, I've had enough of this. Um, so the, at the end of that first day, I, I camped at a truck stop. I, this was a loved truck stop on the interstate. I had brought, you know, a tent and a sleeping bag. And mind you, I had never done this before. This was, you know, the, the best planning that I could do, but it actually worked out really well. So um, the next day I went up to the next checkpoint. And then on the final day I was coming back and the fuel lines on that unit were the original fuel lines. And um, those were about two years old and had become embrittled. So what happened was, one of them cracked right below the fuel primer bulb and the carb started sucking air instead of fuel. And we all know what happens. When that happens, the motor quits and you're not gonna restart it. And unfortunately, I was over an area that didn't have any good outs. So I was over a kind of a forested mountainous area right on the edge of this lake. The only out that I had was a road. And on one side of the road were trees. The other side had power lines. So, you know, my thinking at that moment was, oh crap, I could die. Let's not do that. Power lines are instant death. Trees, okay, yeah, maybe I break some bones or something like that, but I'm probably gonna survive it. So I aimed for the trees. I hit them about 10, 15 feet in the air. Glider went over them, kind of fell uh, with me as I fell and broke tree branches, which slowed my fall. And then uh, the cage actually hit first and absorbed the bulk of the impact. So I walked away with a little scar or a little cut on my hand, which is now a scar and a nice big bruise on my elbow. But otherwise, I mean, I was totally fine. And I was like pumped full of adrenaline as one should be, but that just really pumped me up even more uh, and made me love, you know, cross country adventure paramotoring like this. Uh, even more and made me want to do the full Icarus Trophy. I wanted to do the, the full Icarus race, which this year had been uh, set up to be an 1100 mile journey from 
Montana down to Nevada, right? No one has ever flown this route in a paramotor. You know, this is unheard of. People think this is stupid and crazy, and I absolutely wanted to do it. Um, this sounded like my kind of fun. So uh, I went ahead and signed up for the race, actually um, right after I think I, I flew the Icarus X race. I went ahead and put down the deposit, um, and then in, I started looking at uh, you know motors that I could use. So the Pelini 130 that I had flown uh, on the Parajet frame, you know, it's a solid engine, it's a solid frame, but it just didn't have all the qualities I wanted for a, a journey of that length. Uh, one, it was really really heavy, and two, it really didn't have the power that I needed. So uh, a couple times during the Icarus X race up in Oklahoma. There were points where I was in some of this mechanical turbulence and, and you know different air currents where I was actually getting sucked down and I couldn't climb. It got to the point at one point where I had actually gotten out of my harness um, in order to you know potentially land if I got you know couldn't couldn't get the climb that I needed to get out of this. Um, and so yeah, that that led me to decide yeah I, I most definitely need something with a little more power. So. Um, I started talking with some people, I had a potential sponsorship, um, but things just didn't work out um, with that. So uh, I was kind of looking at a few different units, um, you know, in the August, September time frame, and I decided to go up to the Indy Air Hogs Fly-In up in uh, Scottsburg, Indiana um, in September. And that's actually where I met Eric for the first time. So. Um, I was flying my Parajet still. Uh, I had gotten the cage repaired. Uh, it was running great. And I, I had some awesome, awesome flights up there. Really enjoyed it. Uh, but towards the end of the fly-in, um, Eric was like, hey man, you gotta, you gotta try this Air Conception. And I had had a, a friend back in Texas who had a, an AC-130, but I had never flown it. Um, you know, I'd put it on, I, could, I knew it was a light unit, um, but I had never flown it, didn't, didn't really know you know, uh, how much I would like it, I guess. Um, so uh, Eric gave me the, the, the nit uh, someone else's Nitro 200 actually. And I, I put it on, I went up and, you know, uh, being the noob that I was, I didn't even adjust the straps. And as I took off, Eric nearly shit his pants because the motor kind of torqued sideways. Um, but I, you know, took off just fine and didn't break anything, went up and, and it just really, uh, it, it blew me away with the amount of power and how light the unit was. So um, I went up, did a little bit of you know gentle wing overs. I didn't want to do anything too crazy because this was someone else's unit. Um, and then came back down on the ground and um, you know I was pretty much sold at that point that I needed an air conception. So um, you know I, I went ahead and ordered one from Aviator PPG. And I think the the rest is pretty much history at this point. So I went up to Montana. Um, with the uh, Nitro 200 that I had gotten. Um, and I had put maybe an hour or two on it back in Texas before I went up to Montana um, and then flew 1,100 miles. So, but it worked. I made it through the damn race. I'm here today. Uh, I've won the Ic first Icarus X race of this year here in Florida. And you know, I don't think there's, there's any turning back now at this point. Um, these units are just absolutely incredible. Um, the way it's performed for me, the, how much, how reliable it's been. Um, the weight is, is really the biggest thing, I guess, for me. Um, when you're flying these cross-country races, you really need to be able to carry a lot more than you normally would when you're just flying around for fun, right? Um, I have a big, giant Patagonia duffel bag I carry with me. Um, during the X-Race just now, it had a big one-gallon fuel cell in it, and then you know, all kinds of other crap that I needed while I was flying. Um, the same is true during the big Icarus Trophy. Um, I had, you know, my tent and my sleeping bag. I had a bunch of oil in there. Um, and it's just, just performed um, every time that I've asked it to. Um, there's been no questions. Um, it's, it's just been rock solid. And that's, that's what I really love about it, um, you know. One thing that you learn during these events is is really to trust your gear, um, and well, it's it's not something you learn, but it's something you have to do. You have to trust your gear. That's the only way to get through one of these things because you're going to be flying over mountains, 
uh, in the case of you know the Icarus Trophy or down here in Florida, you're flying over ponds infested with trophy-sized gators, right? And you don't want to go down on one of these things, okay? There's there's no way you're going to be able to take one of these gators, especially with you know you know 50 pounds of motor on your back and being drugged underwater by your wing. There's not a chance of survival. So this motor has to work, and and that's what the Air Conception did for me. It it took me over all these swamps and lakes. I can't tell you how many gators I saw flying over, you know, the, the lakes here in Florida. Uh, but, you know, it was just rock solid and, and I love it. Um, and, you know, somehow I managed to get around the whole course, um, do more mileage than anyone else on a bigger wing than anyone else <laughs> and still win first place. So I think, um, you know, that, that says a lot about the reliability of the motor. Um, and, and also kind of the planning and, and, and fuel consumption of it too. Certainly the extra gallon that I had helped and, and played a role in terms of the amount of gas stops that I had to make. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a, it's a life-saving combination. It's not a deadly combination. It's a life-saving combination.